white pupils from poorer families have been let down by decades of neglect. This is according to a, re a report from MPs. Now, the chair of the Education Select Committee, Robert Halfen, described it as a national scandal. The government said it was committed to making sure no child was left behind. Our education correspondent, Bramwyn Jeffries, has this report. So it's really important that children appreciate the heritage and where it is that they, they come from. So you have seen that I think for generations now that um, we have forgotten some of these some of these communities. There's very little to kind of aspire to. Claire Marie runs a group of schools across Mansfield. Her own childhood was on a big estate. Now she's determined to raise ambitions. If you want to break that cycle of third, fourth generation unemployment, you need to bring your parents and your community with you. The traditional academic route has absolutely has a place, but I do think that there needs to be a rethinking around what education is for. So she told me the school has a food bank, runs courses for parents in basic skills, and encourages children's curiosity, getting them to think about different jobs. I'm Fiona and I'm in year five. Um, I want to be a vet. My parents tell me that I need to be careful with what I do because um, they don't want me to end up with not a great job and they really want me to um, really go ahead with what I want to do. I'm Georgia. When I grow up, I want to be an interior designer. My mum really just really wants me to have a better job than her because she didn't really pay attention in school. Part of the solution to this is giving children a very rich experience of education. So here at this primary school, they learn about the history of Mansfield. It's proud industries like textiles and mining, but also about looking to the future and creating a sense of opportunity for what that might bring. Mum Kerry wants her two sons to get good apprenticeships. Generations of her family have seen solid jobs disappear in Mansfield. When my mum and dad left, you know, school, well, they went straight into like, you know, factories and me and my mum, I think she went into a factory when she was, I think she was 15. And, you know, they could go straight into work. I know it was a factory, but they went straight in and that's where, you know, that's where they went. And nowadays I do think it's a lot harder for people to come out of school and go straight into a job. Harry now runs a successful vintage clothes business. But after school, he did one low-paid job after another. It's unless you've been given an opportunity or you've got family that can help you out, you're going to be stuck in those jobs, literally just dead end, you know what I mean? It was, I was never going to go anywhere. Terrible wage. And I always knew kind of I had to have my fingers in other pies, you know what I mean? I always had to do something else on the side to make extra money. Relentless hard work means Harry has his own shop, but MPs say others are let down by a system that sees only poverty, not place or circumstance. This report calls for a fundamental rethink in what schools and education deliver for white working communities. Because, as it spells out, for decades there's been evidence that too many children have had their life chances limited by what they see around them, what they're able to experience, by the place that they grow up in. At Harry's old secondary school, they've kept many practical subjects, not just life skills like cooking, but design and technology. MPs say more of this is needed in communities where families want vocational routes, as well as sending their first child to university. I feel like a lot depends off of your family, what your family has done previously, and if you want to follow uh, what they've done. I've never had a fat person in my family go to university, so it'd be a big step, and it's quite a big uh, thing on my shoulders. This school is trying to teach future skills. The government says it's levelling up, increasing technical education. But the real test will be if these pupils get good jobs when they leave. Brownman Jeffries, BBC News, Mansfield. Well, let's speak now to Robert Halfen, who's the chair of the Education Select Committee. He joins us live on the programme. Thank you for being with us this morning. As we were hearing there in um, Bramwin's report, um, you say in this publication that poorer white pupils have been neglected for decades. What do you think the reason is behind that? Well, we have over 900,000 
white working class pupils from disadvantaged backgrounds who are struggling at every stage of the education system from right through from early years to up to higher education and just 17.7 percent of these pupils get passes at GCSE maths and English and just 16 percent of them go to a university and they underperform compared to almost every other uh, ethnic group every other uh, cohort and this group have been neglected for for decades and that is wrong it's a scandal and it has to be addressed but there are a number of reasons why this is happening it's partly due to place often money and policy is all thrown at the big cities and towns where many of uh, white working class uh, pupils live um, are often left behind and neglected there is a family disengagement from the education uh, curriculum the multi-generational uh, disadvantage there's lack of care about uh, these students who are not going to a uh, university there's a host of reasons that this is going on but there's also muddled and lazy thinking because the stock answer to this it's is, is people say it's because of poverty but if it was down to poverty we would not have most other ethnic groups who are also disadvantaged who are also on free school meals performing much better in terms of their educational outcomes you talk about the investment. The government say that they are investing £14 billion over three years with money for early years education and the pupil premium. Is that enough? Well, of course, I welcome uh, what the government uh, is doing, but what they need to do is address this specific uh, problem and also acknowledge it because, uh, you know, if you have 900,000 disadvantaged pupils, white working class pupils, struggling in our education system, having poor results, poor outcomes, that should be uh, addressed by the government and seen as a top priority. Uh, we got a response from the head of Association of uh, School and College Leavers, Jeff Barton, who is a regular contributor to this programme. He says that in the report, you've obviously you highlighted the phrase white privilege. He says that's not helpful to do that and could actually detract from some of the key points in the rest of the report. Why, why did you choose to hone in on that phrase? Well, um, let me make it clear. I'm from a Jewish background. My father was an immigrant here. I know all about racism and anti-Semitism, but the concept of white privilege, which is being introduced in our education system, which is being recommended by Bernardo's in their blogs, which is also being pushed by some local councils in the country. The concept of white privilege is wrong-headed for a number of reasons. It's wrong-headed because it implies collective guilt when individuals should be responsible for acts of racism. It's wrong-headed because it says to poor white uh, disadvantaged communities, like uh, I have many uh, disadvantaged white working class people in my own constituency of Harlots, they're saying that they are uh, white privileged. And it's wrong-headed because at every stage, as we've just discussed in the education system, white working class boys and girls from disadvantaged backgrounds are underperforming compared to their better off peers. So it's a divisive a concept. It pits one group against another. There is already disengagement in the education system and that um, uh, uh, that just perpetuates it. You said that um, you wanted um, acknowledgement from the government. I, I wonder whether you've discussed any of these findings in the report with the Education Secretary Gavin Williamson or are you due to do that? We have the Secretary of State appearing before our committee tomorrow. Uh, no doubt we'll discuss some of these things. We've had the schools minister uh, come in as part of our, uh, Nick Gibb, as part of our evidence uh, when we were doing this inquiry, which took over, w w took over a few months to complete. But go back to the uh, what I said to you originally, the problem with existing thinking is people just put it down to poverty and they say more of the same is needed. It is not poverty because otherwise white working class pupils would not be doing worse compared to other groups also who have a very disadvantaged circumstances. And it can't be more of the same because we need some significant changes. We need to have a much wider vocational education system introducing design and technology into the EBAC. We need to uh, make sure that uh, funding is micro-targeted, tailor-made right down to a neighbourhood level. We should have teaching degree apprenticeships where teachers can train in disadvantaged uh, communities. We need to introduce family hubs across every town and also have much more parental engagement with schools like the Felton Reach Academy does to help those parents who've been disengaged from the education system for some time.
Of course, all of this, um, you know, you've acknowledged it yourself, requires funding. We were live at uh, Coventry Hospital yesterday speaking about some of the, uh, not similar issues, but issues of a lack of funding and the senior consultants there are all saying the same thing. This needs to be addressed with simply more cash and yet the government post-pandemic will be dragged in all sorts of directions, squeezed on funding in the coming years. Is there going to be anywhere near the amount of money in the system, not only to support the NHS and their increased needs, but to, to do some of the things you're talking about in education? Well, I, we produced a previous report uh, that there does need to be a long-term plan for schools and a secure funding settlement, and I, was all, I will always battle for more funding. But this isn't just about uh, more funding. It's actually about reform. It's about using the existing funding and, and making sure that it's tailor-made for disadvantaged uh, communities and helping those towns that uh, have been left behind. It's it's also about uh, introducing, as I say, teaching degree apprenticeships. The government's already investing in family hubs, but they should be put across every town because we know that will make a difference to uh, parents, particularly those uh, dis from disadvantaged backgrounds who who often disengage from education and and may need that extra extra help, which will help their uh, children alongside. Robert Halfen, uh, good to speak to you this morning. Thank you very much.